Hello and welcome everybody to Masters Weekend. But it's not Masters Weekend. For those of you in the future who don't know what's going on, COVID-19 is going on. It's the spring of 2020. And so to reduce the spread of coronavirus, everything's kind of on lockdown. Stay at home and don't get sick. Hope everybody out there is healthy. Don't get sick. Don't spread the disease. So what are we going to do? Instead of focusing on the negatives, I like to focus on the positives. We're going to celebrate Arnold Palmer's 1960. That's 60 years ago. We turned back the clock 60 years ago. We're going to see Arnold Palmer come back from a seven stroke deficit to win the US Open. To celebrate, I'm going to take some golf clubs that I associate with Arnold Palmer out on the golf course. Uh, it's a stretch for one of them here. We'll talk about that. First, I want to talk about the golf balls. Somebody in the comments recommended that I use Wilson Duo Soft for persimmons. I think I got the wrong ones. I think I got the the uh, Tor True True the TD. Apparently, that stands for True Distance Soft Golf Balls. I put my logo on it. I have a website hobbyjohn.com where I put pictures from this channel up there talking about identifying golf clubs. So this is what I'm going to be playing, and why Wilson? Because Wilson sponsored Arnold Palmer back in the 1960 U.S. Open. So what do we have here? For starters, um, I wanted a solid persimmon, so I grabbed a 1986 Wilson staff. This isn't gamed by Arnold Palmer. This was just something that I chose because it's a Wilson. I wanted a Wilson persimmon, and this is the oldest one I could find. This is how it is. I do have those top-notch laminates. I didn't want to play a laminate, you know, to celebrate one of the greatest comebacks in golfing history. Somebody out there is like, it was the greatest comeback in golfing history. And then the putter is the Arnold Palmer personal putter. It's kind of a, I don't know how to describe it, a cross between a Wilson 8802 and a McGregor Ironmaster. We'll see how that, I'm a little bit worried about my putting today. And then we have these lovely True Matic, Arnold Palmer True Matic irons. These were when these were pro shop only. Very lovely irons. They're a little bit short for me. I think they're like three quarters of an inch short. And we have a Wilson Staff pitching wedge. And I was looking for a vintage sandwich. I'm not sure if I don't have one. I'm not sure if I'm going to throw in a modern sand wedge just so I have a 56 degree club. Uh, I would like to keep it the irons at least, all older. Maybe I'll just play with a, have you guys ever played without a sand wedge? Maybe just use the, the pitching wedge here. So we'll see what happens out on the course. I'm gonna play Steel Canyon. Steel Canyon's a little executive course. It has, so when Arnold Palmer made his amazing comeback, the par was 71. At Steel Canyon, the par is 61. And if you think of it like that, he shot, I believe, a 65. He did really well on his comeback bid. But the par for all 18 holes at Steel Canyon is 61. And so in my mind, I always play this like game of like, if I have a 10 stroke easier course, could I still, and the, you guys know the answer, could I still keep up with Arnold Palmer and shoot under 65? So we should pick up the action at Steel Canyon. We have a 257 yard par four here. So let's uh, see how this works out for us. Not sure if you're gonna be able to see the hole down there. Kind of uh, middle center screen. Nice penetrating ball flight. Get a good bounce off that hill. Nice bounce off that hill. And it looks like I'm in a swamp. You can see I'm sitting right in some casual water here hole is about 40 yards away using my pitching wedge not a sand wedge or a lob wedge so this is always good practice for me the first hole I you saw what I did with my chips so I'm just gonna place this keep things moving here it's always fun to play off of a down slope all right 40 yards with a pitching wedge this is not something I do all the time ball below my feet dramatically Looking to make good contact here. And I got slapped in the face with some mud. 
It looks like I'm going to be playing a bunker shot with my pitching wedge. That's always fun. So a wet bunker here. Let's see what we can do here. Barely got it out. Very much a warm up for the first uh, outing of the year. All right. Oh, broke a little to the right. We have a 100 yard par three over water. So we'll see how this works out for me. Again, normally my sand wedge distance, but we're gonna hit a pitching wedge because that's worked out so well for us here so far today. Here we go, lucky broken tee. Really need to connect with this pitching wedge at least once today. And I got a feeling that this is not it. So hopefully you can see the splash here. Pulled it a little bit left. Hopefully it hits the green and it didn't. It's on that hill past the green. So pitching wedge going a little over 100. All right. Wow, it went pretty straight. The wind might've had more effect than any sort of slope. It was pretty flat. And these are the ones that I'm no good at. These little four footers. Especially with these uh, flanged putters. Well, that's a bogey. I'll take that. I'm gonna hit a more penetrating draw into this wind actually. There we go, that's the shape I want. Stick on that green. Oh, it's short. Caught it just a little bit thin. Look how heroic this bag looks. Just one wood. Look at this. I love that. Every time I come back to the cart, this makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sit. A little par putt right here. I don't want to read too much into this, but it looks like it is going to go from my left to right. So we're going to do a little, a little left to right action here. So I'm going to aim for the left side of the hole. Four par. Oh, hit it. Well, another bogey in a row. It says 103 yards, par three. Okay, this one I'm gonna to try to hit really high. Because last time I hit 100, I was over a few yards. So we're gonna hit a nice high open face pitching wedge. It's fading a little bit, hit that slope, come back. And I'm on the green in regulation. See if we can get Arnold Palmer a birdie. It looks pretty flat. I see the slightest left to right again. Oh, let's see if I left a pitch mark here. There are a couple up here. I'll just fix a couple of these. All right, so reading this, this is all about pace here. As it looks pretty straightforward, so left edge of the cup, I'm just gonna aim just outside the left edge of that cup. And it broke a lot more than I thought it would. Well, these are, <laughs> with this putter, <laughs> I could miss this. For entertainment value, let's try these putts. All right, we'll take a par. Is that my first par of the day? Par five, white tees 486. And this is the only wood I have. So this should be interesting. Look at this lovely persimmon. I know it's not the same era as Arnold Palmer, but I needed to find a solid persimmon. Wilson, come on, to celebrate 60 years of the greatest comeback ever. All right, tee it up high. 
let it fly here. Normally I hit a little, and this grip isn't great on this 86. So we're gonna aim a little bit left here. There's a green flag I'm gonna aim for. And I'm just gonna rip one down there. Pretty straight on the fairway. I didn't connect with it solidly. I hit it a little toey, so it it's gonna be a little short. We'll see how my long iron play is. You can watch me try to hit a driver off the deck, which is always, you know it's gonna be a fun time. Top that one right down the fairway. So by my calculations, that top went about 100 yards, because I'm 160 out now, so 110 yards. And I'm on this incredible ball below my feet lie. So let's see what we can do in this situation. Man, my club face is pointed to the right. And I hooked one. We're gonna hit a provisional. Another hook, huh. Let's see if we can go find those. So there's the hole down there. There's my provisional just to the right of the cart path. My first one is right here. So famous pitching wedge. Thank you, Wilson. Aim into the right edge of those trees. I hope I didn't overshoot. I got that. I connected with that pretty well. Well, that looks like a ball right there. That's mine, Wilson duo. The pin's right there, so we do have a shot. Okay, this one's gonna move right to left just a little bit, but again, it's into the wind. So we'll see how that works for us. Right edge of hole. This putter is fun to hit. It really does feel like my Wilson 8802. Get in there. Oh, come on. Blew it past a little further than I wanted to. It's fun watching like PGA programming. They talk about when they hit, when pros hit a ball that far past, they're like, he blew it past the hole. It was so far, it was way too hard. But for me, if I get that far past the hole, I'm like, oh, two and a half, three feet past the hole. That's uh, pretty average for me. So we are going to divide this into three parts. This is the end of part one and then Hopefully it renders by tomorrow at 8 a.m. It might be a little bit late on Friday, the release here. So we'll see, hopefully it finishes. I maxed out my video equipment. I need to figure out some more video solutions to be out on the course for 18 holes because battery life, SD card, everything was just maxed out. Now, the golf clubs, I love playing these clubs, vintage clubs. And to think that they were shooting those low scores under par with clubs like this is really amazing. I really appreciate Arnold Palmer's comeback more now than ever. I also found a beautiful tree that was in blossom celebrating the Georgia spring here, which is always just a wonderful time of life. And on that note, if you enjoy the video, please give it a like, please subscribe if you want more content and be sure to visit my Amazon golf shop in the links in the description below. If you wanna support the channel, I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. I am an Amazon associate.
Thank you so much for watching. I am The Vintage Golfer. We'll be back with part two tomorrow.